I thank you very, very much that we have this opportunity and I will be, um, let me say, my motivation is to give you some tool in your hand uh, so that you can be uh, really harvesting the opportunities which change all this brings. Now, before I start, I would like to ask Siam Gopal just very briefly, what is the situation of the school? Is it already operating or is it still in shutdown? So, um, Simon, Simon, would you like to answer that? It might be nice. Can you, can you unmute yourself? You're on, you're on mute, Simon. Um, we have young people in every day. We're supporting uh, key workers uh, across London. Uh, so we have you know, students in each day and, we're, and they're working with us. All of our students are receiving kind of online lessons and support. And we're looking forward to having the students in, in the foreseeable future phased so we can therefore re-engage uh, and look forward to, to our next phase in education. But some in at the moment and as we move forwards safely, as the phrase goes, uh, more students will join us. But it's that key thing of ensuring that they're still getting the spiritual growth as well as the educational growth through a huge array of, of very dedicated staff. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, I have an idea now. Uh, so, yes, what I would like to do is mm, I would like to give you a model to practice with and it, some of you might like to have a pen and a paper and take notes at a specific time uh, because these things which I will be talking about are very, very, uh, let me say, mm, they are very powerful spiritual tools which will really move you forward. So let me please start. Um, Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Kinamani Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi as we all know, behind Avanti is a great vision mm, to deliver a specific type of education, which is maybe the unique aspect or unique uh, feature of this school. Mm. There is uh, on the flag of Avanti three uh, big lines shine uh, to offer an, edu an educational excellence. Uh, then second line to uh, take care of the character formation and the third line uh, to give a spiritual insight, not just a theory, uh, not just a dogma, not just a philosophy, but a realization, a, a realized insight. So uh, whenever we have a big vision, uh, then it's uh, important that we keep the vision in front of us, but it is also important to deal wisely with whatever obstacles appear uh, as we walk along to come closer to our vision. There is a very nice uh, proverb in Arabia. Mm, I will first give you the context. The people of Arabia uh, often live in deserts. They have a few camels and they are nomads, which go according to the seasons to areas in the desert which uh, help them to, uh, to live their life and survive and so on. Uh, so uh, these nomads have a very interesting 
proverb. And they say, and I've written this down, uh, uh, the journey is not so difficult because the goal is so far. No, the journey is difficult because there is a stone in the school, <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, very wisely put. And yes, Avanti has a, a wonderful vision which lies really, um, I mean, it, it's really a, a, a big vision, I would say, to have such three goals and have people who, who have learned a lot, who have a good character when they leave the school and who are capable to explore the vastness of the spiritual reality in their lives. That's a huge vision. That is not so difficult. If we are interested in the vision, if we have seen, yes, this is also my purpose, that's not so difficult. But when there is an obstacle in the here and now, I'm thinking of really difficult relationships which do happen amongst us human beings. I'm thinking of, you know, of discouragement because of outer uh, circumstances. I can imagine that um, the COVID-19 has placed a lot into people's life and our teachers are, and staff members are also in some ways affected by how different things are going on now. These are stones. Uh, which uh, which come in the shoe and which make it difficult to walk on. Now, I would like to offer to you a very, very effective uh, little tool that will help you to deal with the shoe in the stone, in the, uh, sorry, the stone in the shoe <laughs> and will also empower you to move forward uh, with joy, with energy uh, in your effort to come closer to the goal, which is uh, in some ways also your person should be your personal passion, your personal goal. I would like to again talk to you about the tree of life model in practical uh, terms. I think you all we all have heard about this. I have uh, had one retreat, retreat just dedicated to this. Um, our life is, maybe you can give me a piece of paper. Oh, you are a good painter. Just paint, paint a good tree in your notebook and that I can present. Our human life can be very nicely uh, compared with a tree. Um, mm. A tree has roots that take care of the, uh, I've written this down, it absorbs water or the necessary nutrition. It anchors the tree so that when wind comes and storms come, the tree is not uh, falling to the side. Um, and it also does something like vegetative reproduction. When, when something happens in the tree, a branch gets cut off by a storm or, or anything uh, which is really uh, weakening the vitality of the tree. Uh, if it has strong roots, then um, it can deal with this. So uh, a human being should in the same way have strong roots, which can take care that he's nourished, uh, that he is not exhausted, that he is not, uh, you know, falling whenever something from outside comes, which is unexpected, when the winds of change blow. Uh, uh, and uh, he needs also something that helps him when he's hurt, when he's damaged at times, uh, as it happens in this world, uh, to uh, gain back his or her vitality. Uh, what are the roots of the tree of life? The roots of the tree of life are our spiritual nour nourishment. 
mm, our own spirituality. With this, I mean, uh, with the term spirituality, I mean all this what brings out our human potential, uh, the, mm, that what we are capable of, that which is sometimes hidden when we are working in the everyday consciousness where just things are uh, piled upon us or brought to us to which we have to react. Mm, our uh, potential, our spiritual potential that lies hidden inside will easily help us to deal uh, with uh, the great wave of life, with the unexpected situations which are brought into our lives by this uh, wave. Um, I have seen this uh, in uh, the case of uh, some friends from the Ukraine. They had strong spiritual roots and they were able to deal with this uh, terrible genocide. It was just a few uh, months ago when there was, you know, when the Ukraine had problems with Russia. I think there's, it's still going on. And, soldiers came into the houses of, uh, of my friends with loaded guns. I mean, you can't go more dramatic, really. And, and there was the constant uh, fear that when will they come for me uh, and annex our house, use our cars, and, and so on. And uh, uh, they just sat together uh, in small, you know, three or five, or for friends, they um, took care of the, took care of their spiritual roots by singing together, uh, reading and sharing sacred texts together, and uh, they remained uh, strong. And you know, only weakness attracts other weakness. When you are strong, um, you usually attract stronger things in your life, stronger people and so on. And they, they went very nicely through it. The next aspect of the tree of your life, I would like to say, is the trunk. It's very important to have, uh, for the tree to have a, a strong trunk. And in the same way, it's very important for us to have some physical well-being. The, the roots, that means our the spiritual practice, our spirituality is often not visible, but the trunk of the tree is how we uh, come across in this, in this uh, life. I, I very much appreciate it when Simon said, I have a healthy sweat on my brow because I've just made a walk around the school. This is uh, uh, necessary to do something to take care of uh, your physical well-being. I'm here with my assistant, Go Krishna, and we take care that every day we are mm, having a walk through uh, the nature here, a, a good and uh, healthy walk. And uh, in addition to it, we do the seven-minute challenge. <laughs> what that is, is we do jumping jacks, you should see me and uh, go Krishna. Our dhotis are uh, in movement <laughs> as we do this. So something for your physical well-being is always necessary. If you do not move your body, if you do not breathe uh, properly, if you do not take care what you put inside, if you only put these uh, unhealthy Gujarati prakoras into your mouth <laughs> with deep fried ghee, you will have problems in your physical well-being. Even when you are in bed, and I see one of the participants uh, may be in bed with some temporary illness, uh, hopefully only temporary, move your feet, move your hands, move your arms even. Something is necessary. M movement is life. Standing still is death. It's that simple. Uh, so the tree of life 
uh, has has to have a strong, well cared trunk, and uh, uh, together with the physical well being, which comes in the trunk session, uh, or section in the trunk section, you need to care of your take care of your emotional well being. The mind and the body are so much connected. You have no, uh, it's high undervalued, but there are many studies now out which uh, say a healthy mind takes care of a healthy body, but if you have worries, prolo prolonged resentment, um, feelings of guilt and insecurity, and you nurture them, by going into the endless loop of negative uh, thoughts, endless loops. The inner critic is merciless to us. Oh, I'm not good enough. I'm not well enough. I'm not intelligent enough. I'm not, um, I have, have not, not, it, I have not enough acknowledgement and so on. Uh, you do have to stop the endless negative uh, circuits, uh, thought processes which are in the mind, um, because it makes one physically uh, ill. Um, you know, when I was, I was a few times in the hospital in this life with serious uh, uh, ailments, uh, and I do remember once when I was really close to the edge uh, and the doctor came and said, this night will decide uh, whether you live or whether you die. At that time, I started an amazing practice. I started to dance in my mind. Um, my legs were not able to move any longer because there had been surgery on the legs and there had been a severe, it's called sepsis or life-threatening infection. I could not move. I was had so many mm, artificial nourishment into the veins and so much uh, plastic going here and there. But I started to dance in my mind joyfully uh, and as i did this in a regular daily way uh, my health came back my immune system awoke uh, my mind uh, opened up the circulation system which had been blocked it uh, because it was a you know, vein surgery it was done in the Veins uh, and uh, everything was activated again, like a sleeping computer who only needed an impulse <laughs> so that everything came up. Mind shapes the body, mind shapes our life. Shape your mind, and you get a new life. Mm, it's that simple. So, emotional well being, emotional well being, I would just like to give a, uh, a t talk also a little bit about the six languages of uh, relationships. <laughs> uh, relationships give us so much emotional well-being. Disturbed relationships give us the opposite. We are haunted by the disturbances. Again and again we think of, oh, well, this went sour, oh no, why did this happen? Why was this person so insensitive to say it? You know, these things. Uh, if you want the most nourishing factor that is good relationships, in most, I wanted to say emotional nourishing factors, uh, you should uh, know the six languages which are of a relationship, good relationships, which are given in the uh, in one word, uh, one work. It's called the nectar of instruction. It's an instruction to the mind. Mm. 
Upadeshamrita. Uh, there it is said, start with giving gifts. Um, gifts doesn't only need, uh, don't, uh, uh, gifts does not only refer to physical gifts, like I gave today some nice uh, energy bars to someone and uh, doti and so on. No, uh, it can be also give your time and your attention. Most people need this type of charity more than anything. Yeah? The time and attention. You have to see how much of it you have to, in order to give it. And you will see, as you take care of others, God takes care of you. It is so simple, really. Um, there seems to be a universal law that if you really take care of others, then you are well taken care of. You are held up by uh, this invisible uh, uh, law where you give and then you uh, receive. Mm -hmm. In the Bhagavatam, this is a spiritual book, as you all know, it says, Atamang sarva bhutesho bhutatmanam kritalayam ahayadhanamanabhyam Maitreya Minena Chakshusa. Uh, through charitable gifts and attention, as well as through friendly behavior and by viewing all to be alike, hmm, one will satisfy me who are living, who is living in all creatures as their very self. I've always seen this. If we see uh, people alike, you know. Oh yes, there is this unruly boy. Oh, there is this uh, uh, crying girl. Oh, there is this mm, upset policeman. Oh, there is this kind uh, spiritual mentor. Oh, there is this. See them all alike. They are part of God, and you will find a motivation to care for them and give them. Uh, uh, your gifts of attention, your friendly behavior. It's called Maitri. No? The Buddhists call it loving kindness. In Sanskrit, it's uh, Maitri. Uh, mm. And in this way, you can uh, really see that so much comes back. <laughs> I know this sounds different from the Western ideology. You take, 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 take. And then you assume, woo, I'm, I'm a rich man afterwards. No, uh, try the other way. Give, of course, in a realistic way. We, we, we have only limited amount of uh, time and so on. Yes. And uh, finally, and I want to request you, focus on your inner language. When you, what your mind, or what you are constantly saying to yourself, I would suggest to you, go one day through your life and just listen to what your mind says. Usually it's reoccurring things which, will, which your mind will say to you tomorrow. Also, I don't mean just the things which need immediately attention. Oh, today I have to remember to bring this paper with me or so on. No, see what your mind speaks and optimize your 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 inner language by reading, for instance, wisdom texts regularly. I, I cannot tell you how much I personally profit from uh, my morning time when I have a minimum of half an hour where I observe my, obs absorb myself, I wanted to say, into the uh, sacred uh, wisdom texts and just get a total new perspectives perspective. These wisdom texts are perspective changes. Good, that was the tree, the trunk of the tree of life, physical well-being, emotional well-being. We will go now to the uh, crown of the tree of life, which is mm, the social dimension how we are with others 
because we come uh, to uh, we come closely to the end of this part of our uh, time together where I give a lecture I want to come to a practical point where we do some meditation together um, I will just uh, give you one practice in the social dimension in the crown of your own tree of life mm. but before this before i will uh, give this to you i would like to say that uh, in our little ashram we noted how important the relationships amongst uh, each single member are in their good relationships we found we are much more inspired we can also uh, in a way do much more seva or do, do many more activities but when the relationships are not so good when the crown of the tree is not taken care of then we found out we weaken our selves so I have started or we have started with uh, focusing on one of these practices which we do for others and we do it each day of the week yesterday was Tuesday it was our compassion day <laughs> we sat down we meditated uh, and, and we read some scriptures we sang and then we sent well wishes to everyone. Now, during the whole day, we already practice compassion towards each other. Uh, Monday is our day. We just are starting this practice, but we do it already for a few Mondays now. Active listening. We listen to a, a person. It's... Um, it's not always when you do active listening what they say but uh, listen to what they not say <laughs> what is between the uh, words those things which are unexpressed uh, but which are deeply deeply moving the other person uh, I listened to a very well given lecture by Sutapa. Mm, there was one man going to the <laughs> to, to a Benedict to a monk to a monk. And he said, I have so much difficulties with my wife. It used to be such a harmonious relationship, but now I don't even like to go back home because there is misunderstanding, misunderstandable misunderstanding unrepairable misunderstandings so the monk said to the man you go home and you listen to what she says so one day later the troubled man returned and said i have listened to what she said but it's not going anywhere it's not better then the monk smiled and said, now you go back to your house and listen to what she does not say. <laughs> Those unexpressed things which uh, we hinted at. What a person usually does not express is what is going on right now in his or her life. Uh, and in his or her inner mind and uh, yet uh, although it is an unexpressed thing it is what informs everything which is expressed uh, in words I think you as teachers know better than me that when you have a child and the child is moody or the child is sad the child doesn't respond does not contribute 
the way uh, it usually does. Uh, and uh, there is something which is there, which is uh, lying under the surface, so to say. And if you ask the child, why don't you speak like uh, like you usually do, the child will shrug its shoulders and I don't feel like, or, or will say something. But you can rest assured that there is something uh, unexpressed. So I do acknowledge that when you have a school with 1,800 children, you can't listen to everyone. But I think if you uh, are there and you in, in the front and people know you talk to them as people, as uh, not just as pupils, as students who have to sit a few hours each day in the school and learn something, but you address their concerns, the things which drive their lives, then your communication goes very well. So, yeah, this is a little bit what I wanted to present to you. I uh, have someone with me who's not very kind with me. It's this little monster, <laughs> the time <laughs> indicator, who says um, we, we want to go do cover a few things. I would like to now do a little, it's a kind of active meditation with all of you, where I would like to help you to internalize the wisdom of the tree of life. If you can be so kind with me to now sit up, I saw one of our members is uh, in in uh, in a little bit in the lying a position which is uh, necessary at this moment. So no problem for you. You can do this also in lying. Um, I request you to sit tall. Let me adjust this a little. Yes, it's better. Or if you can't sit tall due to circumstances, uh, I mean, it's all right. I wanted to say it's all right to sit on a chair. Uh, you don't need to sit on the floor. I'm myself not on the floor at this moment for technical Zoom reasons. Mm. And, uh, but you should somehow sit in a comfortable, tall pose. It should be comfortable and you should be able to sit steady without, you know, falling to the side and so on. Take a small, a moment to just look around the room, just noticing thing without a particular in one or when we go into the meditation because you feel safe. You know your room, nothing unexpected will happen outside. Now do a few deep breaths. An easy way to deepen your breath, even lengthen it, is to, on each exhale, exhale a little bit more than you're usually doing. Just go to the edge of your exhale and a little beyond, where you really get the uh, uh, air out of the lungs, or the belly area. As you gently, mildly extend your exhale,
You will also deepen your inhale. See, because most of us are sitting a lot, our breath is affected and we breathe shallow. And there are unexpressed emotions which we cannot or we do not wish to show. Our breath gets affected and shallow. Now all this stress affects our breathing. By simply lengthening our breath as we do now, we de-stress. We have more healthy emotions. And even though we still sit, our body gets activated with fresh oxygen. So please do this. When you are ready, please close your eyes as you continue to in and exhale. I request you now to concentrate on your breath. Each inhale, stay with your ingoing breath. Just be aware the air is coming in. And on each exhale, Stay with your exhaling breath. I will keep on talking, but as you listen, please be with your breath, conscious, mindful breathing. The mind is often restless. if we can concentrate on our breath, it becomes peaceful. Just like a falcon, hunting bird, in training, that is fastened to a perch will fly at first restlessly, but then comes to peace as it settles on the perch. In the same way our mind will settle when it is coming to the breath. Staying with it. And you heard today the analogy of the tree of life. Keep on breathing. It was an analogy to, meant to give you a tool to become very, mm, or, or give you well-being, that's a better word, in all aspects of your life. I request you now to make a little root check. How well are you doing in taking care of your roots? spiritual potential, the full human potential. 
And what is it that you would maybe like to introduce into your life that your roots are even more stronger, more strengthened than they are now? I will leave you with this question for a little while. Trust whatever comes up as you listen deep to your own self is relevant at this moment. Thank you. Now with eyes still closed and deep Relaxed breathing. You don't need to exhale more than you usually do, just to relax in and out. And second question. We will do the trunk check now. What is it that you at the present moment do for this precious human body? that you have. The second question, what is it that you would like to introduce to keep a little bit more physical well-being? Again, trust whatever comes as you actively listen this one question. What am I doing now? What would I like to introduce? Now your emotion check. What is going on for you right now? And what could you do to improve your emotions? Does it have to do to, with reading something, contemplating something, and replacing an old emotion that is not so useful with enthusiasm? it have to do with repairing a relationship or, or, or just calling someone and having a good heart-to-heart -heart talk. Again, trust whatever comes out is relevant for you at this stage. You're almost done. What are you presently doing in the crown of your tree? Your social contacts. There are six languages of relationships to others which I know. 
first was giving gifts. Second is receiving gifts. Yes. Some of us need to receive graciously. We are too hard on ourselves. Third language would be to offer a conversation. Fourth is to listen to that of another person. And the two remaining languages might bring a smile when you, on your face. This offering food is sacred, special. Wholesome, hard, and to receive such food. <laughs> what do you do and what would you like to introduce? At the end, I would like to request you to make a deep, deep inhale and with the end you each one in their own room chanting the sacred home. I will do it one time for you. Just to set the pitch, then we will do it all together. Again, sit straight. And when you will pronounce the own, vibrate the own, please let it come from a deeper place. Maybe I'm speaking now of a physical place, and the stomach, let it travel up to the chest area and then resonate in the area starting from the throat upwards to the head. We do it one time alone and then we will do it three times together. a little higher at the end. Oh. Two times more, please. Give yourself the time to come back to a room of awareness. I hear some birds chirping in my computer. I don't know if you, yeah, real birds are not just the. Uh, uh, technical failure, but uh, uh, yeah, I 
I have to now look with a, with a fearful eye on my terrorist here, <laughs> my, my, my time. Sie haben gefallen. I'm extremely sorry. I'm an undisciplined German. I wanted to stop uh, uh, much earlier and then end the whole thing at 5.50. Now it's 5.53. We are beyond the allotted time. This is a scandal. <laughs> that is really wonderful. And actually, we, have, we still have um, five to ten more minutes. Um, okay, but I, I will make it sure. I won't hold you uh, so that you, that you can you do your other things. Good. Uh, thank you so much for participating. And please, if you have forgotten everything of this lecture, remember this. And you might uh, like to, you know, write here what you do in the root program. What is your trunk program? You know, physical and emotional well being and social well being. What is here? And you, you will have taken care of your tree of life very beautifully. It's a very simple model, very practical, extremely practical. Uh, so, yes, so Siam Gopal, you wanted to take questions and then tell them to me, right? So, um, we've got three questions that have been submitted and interestingly they are exactly according to the tree of life so the first question could relate to the roots and the question is um, what convinced you that the spiritual path is the right path for your life ultimately the experience which I gained by practice if you are interested in the spiritual path and you look towards it, then you think, yes, there is such a path in life and it supplies well-being to those who walk it, apparently. Uh, then it is important to first engage with the knowledge, the philosophy, the wisdom. Read or speak, ask questions, just gain a deeper understanding what it is. The second is that will help you to uh, move closer to your spiritual path is find people who live it. In Africa, I just read this this morning, there is a proverb. If you want to go fast in your life, run along. If you want to go long in your life, the long distance, walk with many. So the people uh, who are on the spiritual path and who somehow give you some trust. Yeah, this person is, um, uh, he is really integral. He, he seems to live by what he talks. So some, some trust is necessary. Uh, and then you maybe talk to the person or you might also read in list, wisdom literature the example of saints, of sadhus, those who really walk, walk it. And you will find. find. But the, so I did all this, but the last really proof of personal, you could say, Mm, that which gives you personal security is always your practice because the practice brings you to your own experience. What is the use of something I hear about or see others doing if I do not have an experience? But when I have an experience, I, I will say I know in my heart this is true. Thank you. Um, the second question was uh, to do with the trunk and the emotional part of the trunk. And it was about oftentimes in our journey towards practicing the tree of life, like you said, there's a stone in the shoe or something comes in front of us and we have to let it go to move on. So how do we actually let things go? If you could answer that. Before you are 
able to let something go forever. Oh, forever is, we have to be careful with the word forever in this world. <laughs> but uh, if you want to let go of something substantially, you first need to accept what it is. You first need to own it. So if there is some stone in your shoe, some negative emotion, which keeps on uh, coming up again and again in your life, deal with it. Find out what triggers this. Uh, find out what is, uh, what is it really, uh, and so on, so that you own it uh, and know what it is. And then, when you, when you want to let go of it, you must see a bigger picture in your life, where this little stone appears to be so insignificant and so disturbing that uh, the bigger picture will help you to let go of it. A good painter, you, I mean, he's a very good painter, is a gross understatement. Uh, there is this, let me remember, Leonardo da Vinci. You, we all have heard about him. He's a genius, really. He's also a mathematician and so on. He said something very, very nice, which is good, uh, good advice to all of those who let, want to let go. He says, from time to time, step back from your life as you would do from a painting. When you are in the distance, you can look more on the painting and more of it can be taken in, in one glance. You will see where your painting lacks proportion, where it lacks harmony. And then step again close to the painting and correct it where it needs to be corrected. So true. In, in a, a spiritual tradition, this um, technique is called Shakshit Vena. Take a neutral observer position. It is described both in the Bhagavad Gita as well as in the Srimad Bhagavatam. That uh, you understand, I, I'm part of uh, God. I'm an eternal soul. Uh, yes, the body moves, the mind moves, but I'm neither uh, the body nor the mind. It is something through which I work in this world, you know, with which I work in this world. But I'm observing these things and I'm using the body and the mind. I'm quite different from it. So, so this, uh, if you don't want to go so far, because that is not yet your reality, then just step back and from a distance uh, look uh, onto your life and then it will be able to let go. But don't make the mistake to ignore what is there. To think this is so bad, I, I don't want to even look at it. Uh, no, you need to deal with it. Uh, you need to look at it and then go into the big picture where it's possible to let go. Thank you. And our, our final question was about the crown and it was how, to, how, sh how can we practice compassion to our colleagues and our family, especially during lockdown where we may not be able to see them or be with them, but we'll only be in a virtual space with them. So how can we practice compassion? And to our students. And to our students. <laughs> the best thing to practice compassion towards those who are absent from us is to just call them into your memory. There's a lot of space in your memory. Uh, call them into your memory and then send them good uh, feelings. What I do nowadays uh, my dear Avanti stuff, 
and teachers and everyone who is with us. Uh, where I also am in lockdown. I mean, it's not so drastic. We can walk here. We are uh, not in the big city. We are at the edge of the city. Um, I call to my mind these retreat participants. I give a lot of retreats and I wish them well. I do this each uh, Tuesday. Uh, what you cannot do in physical space, you can do in another space very easily. <laughs> uh, I know that uh, uh, I once read about Nelson Mandela when he was incarcerated, or the English word is also imprisoned on that uh, Roden Island. He every day had this exercise to uh, give positive impulses into ruling South Africa. Uh, and when he came out, he was a compassionate man. He was once interviewed, what uh, was the Nelson Mandela who went into the prison? And what was the Nelson Mandela who went out of the prison? And this is what he answered. The Nelson Mandela who went into the prison was an angry, frustrated, revengeful <laughs> man. The Nelson Mandela who walked out of the prison was a man who wanted to, good, to do good for the welfare of for others. Mm. So, so that is, uh, he might have done some inner work. So this inner work, oh my dear people, you can't do outer things, means speak words of compassion or give gifts of compassion. If you have not done before, this the inner work. Otherwise, you will suffer very quickly from a compassion fatigue. You, you will think, I can't see anyone any longer. It's too much. They get on my nerves. So, so when you cannot see your pupils or your dear ones who are there, think of them. Uh, even uh, pray for them if you so wish. No? We, and it, this will be uh, recognized and or it will also end and not all and it will shape your character so now my dear everyone i'm looking at the this time we are we are a little bit late and i know how it is many of you have things to do many of you are are and, and even if it's at home where you have to write something and prepare something or maybe some of you want to immediately walk out of your door and do a quick, healthy walk so that you get a healthy sweat uh, across your brow, like our Simon has uh, manifested. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, 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 please, and please, and once again, if you forget everything, even a child can remember a tree. Uh, but you need to fill it out. What is here going on in the roots? You need to fill out this section and you need to fill out that section as well. I thank you very much. Uh, I think, uh, Siam Gopal, uh, you should allow everyone to yeah. move on in their life. And I will just talk to you two more minutes. Vrinda, I see you. And Rupesh and Hirani, I see you. Rata, Kandasami, Kandasami. I see you and I wish you a healthy and good recovery. Um, uh, so, Haribo <laughs> and Simon, of course, uh, I see you also. Uh, so, goodbye, everyone. Haribo. <laughs> Thank you so much for everyone to come.